to our latest uh, virtual bridge session. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, you have me yet again, so I apologize in advance for that. Um, normal service will resume with all the exciting speakers <laughs> coming up. And in fact, the, our next virtual bridge session is uh, from JISC, uh, from Esther, who's promising to deliver the best ever webinar session you have ever been to. One that is guaranteed to leave you feeling happy, so you can't miss that. So sign up for that next Friday. So uh, today we're going to cover the use of Flipgrid. And that's something that a previous session had covered, uh, touched upon. Uh, Joy from West College Scotland had been uh, talking about Wakelid, uh, delving deeper, but had come up uh, Teams integration and also Flipgrid. And Flipgrid is certainly a popular tool that has been around for a while. And, and I thought I'd probably just take a little bit of time to talk about my experiences of Flipgrid, um, how I've used it and how I can see it can be used for, for things like, well, especially feedback. So um, I'm going to start off with a quiz because I, well, it's not really a quiz, but it's, it's a test your general knowledge thing uh, <laughs> for the people in the room. So if I share my screen, um, and that's not always a given. Uh, I'm going to share it with computer sound. <gasps> That'll be a thing. Uh, share. Right. Okay. So I don't know what that number was. It's probably like a really secret password or something. But anyway, um, <laughs> does anyone, when I say anyone, I'm, I'm speaking to the, you know, the, the, the one person in the room. <laughs> does anyone know what this icon is? Because this kind of started me on my journey of Flipgrid. Uh, but oddly enough, it's got nothing to do with Flipgrid. But it was all about this to begin with. Uh, nope, from me. <laughs> I feel nope. you should, I, I, I feel, Jason, Owen, you should, you should throw in with a guess. Does that not, does it not suggest? I'm think, <laughs> <laughs> think of the amount of money that must have gone into designing that icon. <laughs> it was, um, it's actually, uh, well, I, I've got another clue. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I can, I can do it on my, my um, view. Can you, can you see that I'm like, I'm wearing something. It's not a badge to get into my own house. Uh, although my kids often say that I need one. Um, I had to wear this because this is connected with that icon. Well, let me just... You can't really tell. I mean, it's just for the fact that it's like this and it's hanging from my neck. Any ideas? Um, ah. Yes, something. Something pass. <laughs> yes, it's pass, you know, with assessment. Um, so this, this is a swivel controller. Uh, an icon, it's a, a microphone. And basically swivel was one of those remote camera solutions where you could stick your phone on a, a, a rotating, um, tilting, panning sort of platform. And it, if, if you wore one of these badges, then it would follow you around. And this badge was a microphone. And it would record your lecture, essentially your presentation. And it was initially designed as a tool, highly overpriced. It started out on Indiegogo, actually, and then went to Kickstarter and <laughs> eventually went mainstream and commercial. Um, a single unit cost like 600 pounds. It was like, it, it, wow, well, anyway, <laughs> conversation for another time. But they were cool. They were awesome. Like I used to, I do have one. Um, I, I bought it much, much cheaper second hand. And in a session, so you would see the camera so follow you around the room and it would record and sync with slides that you were presenting. Um, and it was originally designed as a tool for reflection and feedback on your own teaching. So it wasn't designed as a lecture capture tool, but it ultimately it was used as that as well. But anyway, the company Swivel, um, they decided that they monitored all the usage of the way the Swivel software had been used. And they noticed that some teachers were using Swivel to capture their students' um, feedback and to reflect on their own studies. And because it was a, a, a kind of um, a workaround, it wasn't really what Swivel was designed for. Swivel then produced this application, this online free service called Recap. Uh, it was on a site called letsrecap.com. And when you went there, you basically, you could, as a student, pose, oh, as a teacher, pose a question online, then share a, a link to all your students. And they would go to the site and they could record a video response to you. And, and it was awesome. Like the workflow was really, really, really nice. It was, it was brilliant. Um, uh, it was definitely worth checking out. And I used it in workshops. I saw it being used in Ayrshire College. Um, who had been using Swivel quite a bit. 
it was it was brilliant but and i talked about it to other people and i would demonstrate it like here's the app here's recap look you can set a question all your students can give responses it's nice video flow and this is back in 2000 what maybe 17 or so 16 17 is when the service started up and then <laughs> as with many of these projects that start out they announced the closure at the end of 2017 after i'd been talking about it and i was like this is awesome this is a brilliant feedback tool look video on your phone your students can just pick it up and just answer questions and, and fire it back to you and you can see a gallery of responses and so <laughs> <laughs> disheartened um, I, I kind of stepped away from from similar solutions but at the time there was another solution that came up on the scene and it was called Flipgrid and Flipgrid offered essentially the same sort of idea it was the idea that you could on your phone or via the PC the teacher could set a question and and your students essentially could give you some some feedback via the app and it would come back as a short recorded video. And the videos are really short from like 15 seconds up to a maximum of, I think the maximum is now is 10 minutes or so. Um, and this service was like massively popular. It, it outstripped Recap and probably <laughs> contributed to the demise of Recap as a service. Um, but at the same time, when I'd, I'd heard about it, I was like, oh, look, a finger's burnt. <laughs> I'm not doing that again. <laughs> So, but the thing that changed, that changed my mind about Flipgrid, apart from the fact that lots of people were talking about it, was this announcement in 2018. <laughs> Microsoft decides to buy Flipgrid. Um, and, and that kind of, then you, well, you know it's going to be around for a while. It's got a stack of money behind it. I think on its first round of, um, as a startup, it, it raised like 17 million dollars <laughs> in a few weeks um, and then later obviously Microsoft bought it when it became hugely popular. So that's the thing about Flipgrid. Flipgrid is now a Microsoft product. It's and you can see the Microsoft logo in the top left hand corner. So it's something you can depend on even though it might not be part of your regular tool set just now you could be fairly convinced that it's going to be around for a while because it started to be integrated into Microsoft Teams and other applications. Um, it, it, it has so much development to it and such high usage now. Um, it has good accessibility features, all provided by Microsoft. That means that this is probably something worth um, checking out. So um, to log in to this you can either use interestingly enough from <laughs> microsoft's perspective you can log in essentially using a, a google account or a microsoft account and that's just to recognize the fact that it's mostly used within schools so schools are generally evenly divided amongst the google camp and the microsoft camp um, you can sign up with um, email and password in the past uh, so legacy people can create that but Basically, they push you towards either Google or Microsoft. So if I log in with my Google account, so something I've done earlier, you're presented essentially with a simple um, area where you can create what they call grids. And a grid is just basically uh, one area for one class or one group of students or one project that you're doing. And then within each of, of your grids, you can add a number of topics. So um, I created this virtual bridge demo. So here's my, my grid. And within that, I've, I've got two topics. It always starts with a kind of icebreaker, introduce yourself, say hello in for grid uh, topic. Um, and this is one that I've, I've created. So when you set these up, there's not much to them. You, you give your grid a name, it assigns you with a flip code, which is basically the link that the students will use to get to your flip grid. And you can customize it if the name is available with anything you want. So you end up with a really readable kind of link. You have a number of choices as to how people um, join your grid and how you can manage your privacy. So the main one that people sort of recommend within schools tends to be that they log in with their Microsoft account. So if your college or your institution have an Office 365 login, that's the one you'd, you'd probably go with. Now it's interesting because they have a, a class register 
one that isn't really open to people in Europe because all of the data is held in the States. And so for under GDPR, um, that it's not recommended as, as an option for classes. And the last one is basically just an open public grid where you can share your stuff with people. Other than that, um, the things to notice in this setup is that captions are, are generally not set up um, by default, they're, they're switched off. Now I've switched them on here a while ago. So um, they're normally off. The first thing I would do when I set up a grid is change the, the caption language to, to your, the language that you intend to use. So in our case, United Kingdom English, but the, essentially because it uses as Azure programming in the background to do all of the auto captioning. And there are so many people using this service and it costs obviously Microsoft money to, to do all of that captioning. By default, they've, they've switched off um, captioning, but it is there and it is very accessible. So the first thing to do is switch on. Um, you can drop a picture in or use one of the defaults to lighten up your, your, your grid. Um, and then, well, that's, that, that's your grid. And from there, you're, you're setting up topics. Um, a topic is just like a question that you want to pose. And then that's open for a number of people to come back. So uh, if I set up a topic, um, okay, let's, let's add a new topic. It's, let's look, um, oh, what did I say before? How, oh, how well do you know each other? I think that was the, the demo one I was writing. Um, <clears throat> ask your colleague, let's think of a question. Owen, how, how well do you know Jason? Uh, moderately. <laughs> okay. Uh, ask your colleague, um, what's your favorite, what, what kind of thing would you not normally know about somebody? What's your favorite um, flavor ice cream. of ice cream? Okay. <laughs> we think alike. We, I, I should be doing this with you. <laughs> <laughs> now you can set a time as to how long you want the response to be. And to be honest, uh, <laughs> an essay on, on the flavor of ice cream that you want. Um, so let, let's say 15 seconds is fine. You can moderate the responses so that when students reply, they're not made visible to anyone else, either your class or the wider public until somebody checks to make sure that the content is appropriate. Um, and interestingly enough, inside all of this, you can add uh, everything from like a video. Um, maybe you want students to watch a video and then maybe comment upon it. Um, maybe if you want to, I think this is, what's this one? Uh, drop a, upload your own video if you have it to hand, um, you've got access to, to OneDrive or to, to your Google Drive if you want to upload a document and you want them to read through something maybe and then make comments on it. So you can put up a lot of content. Obviously you do have <laughs> GIFs because you know, you, life wouldn't be the same without GIFs. Um, oh, we'll have to go with the bear GIF. Uh, that's the one we want. So once we've created a question, we create the topic and it sets up this link that you can then send to your, your, your students and then they'll be able to, to join and post responses into this. So here's, here's, the, here's the question I've set, uh, how well do you know each other? Um, and this is the discussion. Now I can record the response, but it's better to show uh, me doing this on a phone because I'm using my camera in the Zoom session and it won't transfer into this as, as we discovered in a previous Zoom session. Look, it's all about the learning. Um, but just to show you what's produced in the end, it was interesting. I was at uh, an ALT meeting. So ALT is the Association of Learning Technologists and they had used Flipgrid to collect a series of ideas. Um, so this was their Flipgrid topic page um, and they'd set up a, a meeting and beforehand they'd asked people to post uh, an answer to this question. Which technology and or solutions have you found most useful in responding to the current COVID crisis? So a, a bunch of people who were attending the meeting then posted uh, a, a short two minute video on the kinds of things that they wanted to talk about. And every time somebody posts onto it, you see it appear within this kind of topic page. So I obviously um, 
spoke in it, and and I recorded. I'm Ken Jula, uh from the College Development Network, <laughs> and I've recently become. Grew younger. I, I I was being obsessed with the Snapchat baby face again. I couldn't resist showing it one more time. Really, so it, it's a really nice kind of quick overview, and you can listen to lots of people's ideas. Good ways of of capturing a bit of feedback before or after a session. Um, and I'll, I'll share a link with that if you want to hear what all the exciting people <laughs> at Flipgrid wanted to say. But so getting back to our one, in our topic now, what we can do is we can share this with respondents and to see what, um, how they're going to respond to it. So you'd share it to the class. Now, there's a few extra things that are worth pointing out. Microsoft are behind this. So they've embedded a lot of accessibility into the navigation, the structure and the UI. So you, you find these immersive reader links within question points. And what that does is it basically switches on the immersive reader that comes with Microsoft products and provides you with an incredibly accessible interface for students who want to answer questions. So for example, in, in this particular area, if I click onto this immersive reader, it takes out the question that's being posed to the student. And, and then you can play it Ask back. Ask you colleague, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? You can't choose the accent, unfortunately. You've got a massive um, area of like, changing the background color, the font size, all the elements you would normally find in Immersive Reader. And that's embedded throughout um, all of uh, Flipgrid's um, materials. And also, they've just recently announced that they're going to start adding support for game controllers. So people with physical disabilities now can use the entire interface with an adaptive game controller or just a regular um, Xbox or PlayStation controller, <laughs> if you happen to be using one. So um, let's just see um, what kind of responses we can get. So this is the flip code. Now, the flip code I will make slightly larger because it's 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 not going to be as obvious. Uh, this is this is what you would see if you were in a PC and you would click on the plus sign to record a video. And what I'm going to ask Owen and Jason to do because um, they'll they'll be doing it themselves. They'll they'll close their their mics and then they'll record a response into this. How well do you know each other? Question about the flavor of ice cream. So to get to that, they need, <laughs> they need this link. Uh, I've got it already. Have you, look, look, you're so good. How good are you too? And what can I say? Um, I'm waiting on the QR code. You're waiting on it. The, oh, there is a QR code, you're right. You can get to the QR code. Uh, I remember actions. Uh, you would think I would remember where the QR code is. Um, it is in here somewhere. There is a QR code, I'm gonna say that. I'm still going to delete this part from the, the edited part of the, <laughs> the recording. Where's the QR code? I totally know this. I've used this before. Let me, let me trust you to come up with a question that absolutely stumps me at the, that's the view. QR code. You can share it with a QR code. 100% share. <gasps> share QR code. Sorry, I just feel so triumphant every time something works. So if you if you put that onto the screen and then you, you use your app. <laughs> right, okay, you're done, brilliant. So as Owen and Jason will go away for a second and uh, they will record something, uh, I'll, I'll show you what they're doing essentially um, by, by doing the same thing on my screen. So if I stop my share and I share this time uh, what they're doing, which is, uh, let me share my, my iPhone. Other, other <laughs> platforms are available. Uh, let's see, screen mirroring. Oh, look, there's, there's my phone. So if I show you, here's Flipgrid. And if I put in the flip code that's in here. So what's the flip code? Uh, you would think I would have, <laughs> <laughs> Look that up. I do know it. I do know it. I know it. Um, so the flip code is two F three B B eighteen F. <laughs> that was so quick. <laughs> right. So 
Um, so this is what they would see on their screen. And you would see the question, you got the immersive reader link, uh, the number of responses that are currently been shared. Now, I would press on the green button here. Uh, I would, let's say, log in with Microsoft. I wonder if it'll show like all my passwords. That wouldn't be good, would it? Um, <laughs> uh, yes, I am trying to. Oh, oh, look, there we are. Okay, so now I'm going to record like my session. Um, like, okay, I'll do it in, into here. That's a much better camera, isn't it? You see the full me. Um, okay, I I think that Jason's favorite ice cream is. I'm going to say chocolate. I mean, that's kind of kind of original. And um, Owen is vanilla. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I I think that. Jason's favorite ice cream is, I'm going to say chocolate. I mean, that's kind of, kind of original. And um, Owen is vanilla. Right. That's why. Now that I have that, um, I can review it. If I want to change it, I can do it again. I can take a selfie. Uh, <laughs> and then if I'm happy with that, I, I can submit the video. There you go. Let's return to the grid. Okay. I, I, so I'll stop sharing. And we'll see if oh, Owen and Jason have 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 made a, a response or not. <laughs> um, did you did you respond? Did you? Yes, we yes. did. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So let's let's share share the screen and just see if it worked. <laughs> Which is not. Let's face it. Not a guarantee. Um, <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Uh, so let's refresh this. Two responses. <gasps> I've got one from Owen and I, Jason's has not appeared yet. <laughs> what can I say? Right. But let's, let's look, let's look at Owen's um, to see what he said. Now, just, Fine. just before I play this, just, well, in fact, let's just play it. Three seconds. Wow. Straight into the point. Owen, you are a star. My favorite ice cream is the classic chocolate. <gasps> okay. Right. Chocolate's not classic. <laughs> <laughs> So there's, there's a couple of like cool things about this, and some of this is only visible to me as a as a as a teacher, um, and or depending on how you set it up. But basically, I can give feedback, um, video feedback to to my my class, um, and the video feedback will only be visible to them. So it's kind of a response to them, and you can set up in such a way that you can see replies and start a conversation and a dialogue using um, Flipgrid as well. You can also have access to this uh, grading rubric, which is another way of feeding back, just using a set of criteria that you set up. Either use the default, um, which they set up with these two points about ideas and performance, or, or do something a bit more customized. Um, with comments, just text feedback. And again, that just goes straight back to Owen. <gasps> I'll just add um, Jason's one. Um, is chocolate, chocolate, cho chocolate uh, classic? You can't get that inflection. Classic, like <laughs> the ridiculousness <laughs> of that statement. Mark after the question mark, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, right. That, that, yeah, so look yeah. at that. And, and I thought I was the English teacher. Uh, <laughs> um, and when that feedback um, can e <laughs> email them, or if, if sometimes students don't have access to their email, um, and if they're not using that in some way, then you can just give them a link and you'll see, they'll get a link directly to your video feedback if you want to post it within a VLE or something. So um, yes, and I, and I recorded one as well. What did I say? Okay, I, I think that Jason's favorite ice cream is, I'm going to say chocolate. I mean, that's kind of, kind of original. And um, Owen is vanilla. That's why. <laughs> I ran out after 15 seconds. So uh, is chocolate original then? Are we going to pull you up for that as well? <laughs> I know, I know. That's, I, I, I know, bad feedback. What can I say? <laughs> so it's just, just out of interest. Jason, what is your favorite ice cream? Well, I didn't get to the submit button, so it's there now, so you'll have to watch oh, the video. Oh, right. Oh, oh, okay. I am excited. Sorry. <laughs> Too much coffee. <laughs> I'm a complex sort of guy. Depends on the day, but if I had to go for one, it'd be Scottish tablet ice cream, <laughs> but Hagen-Dazs Belgian chocolate on an evening, very good. 
fruity during the diva Scottish tablet all times. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna give I'm gonna give Owen that one. I mean that's that was <laughs> I, I I think um <laughs> these kind of video responses, like why why would you set them up and why would you use them? They could be used for assignments, they could be used for icebreakers. There's so many ways that you could use this kind of uh work. And I think oh Look at that. In my original question, what I wanted to do was to put people into teams. So I'd asked the same question in a previous topic when I was just trying to work out what am I going to do as questions. And my question there was, how well do you know each other? Um, so you've been colleagues for years. But how well do you know each other? Let's find out. Record a response to the question. What is your colleague's favorite color of wallpaper? I don't know what I was thinking there. It's probably about something to do with the green screen in the back. Now, when you're setting this up, you notice that there were options for feedback there. And if you're, you're setting up one of these questions, um, let's see if we want to edit this one. Um, one of the options that you have here is to, to look at customized feedback. Um, and that's specifically talking about rubrics. So in this feedback, they suggest that they use these two rubrics. But you, if you want to customize it, you can write up your own list of feedback. Now, I, I was looking through the Flipgrid um, help sort of content. Uh, as I was looking through it, I mean, the help content is really good. So there's a like a, a typical, I'll put links into the recording page, but there's like a getting started thing, which just teach you, there's a lot of videos, like as you would expect with Microsoft and with Flipgrid, there's a ton of help around this and a lot of community built stuff as well as examples and, and Flipgrid videos and responses and ideas for topics, etc. But one of the things they were, in one of the pages that they were talking about is they were talking about, oh, this educator's guide is, is fabulous. I'll, I'll add, add a link to it. Um, but one of the things that they had was this idea of feedback and what should you use for feedback? And there's a guy called Eric. I forget his surname. That's so bad. <laughs> he's, he's well known about um, delivering presentations and talks around how to assess good speaking. Uh, that's his primary focus about presentation skills. And he usually, he, he, he slants like all of the feedback rubrics that are out there, but he basically divides his two rubrics into two parts. One is about performance, the actual delivery, which ignores the content. And the second part is about how you prepare for your presentation. And that's more about your, your content and your structure. But in this performance area, he uses this, um, <laughs> this, this uh, mnemon mnemonic um, PV legs, uh, which stands for poise, voice, life, eye contact, gestures, and speed. And, and so I, I like the idea that he's thought about this. I don't necessarily agree with it um, on every point, but I would say that when I've been with students and I've talked about that kind of peer assessment approach where you can also ask students to, to watch someone else's presentation and then feedback on it in terms of giving them a rubric to work with. My approach is, tends to be is you would go with a simple rubric, but you would probably discuss it with your students beforehand as well. You would want them to sort of feed in, like to understand what you mean by the rubric, which is something that Eric talks about quite a bit. He said that when you have rubrics, they often talk in a language that is very formal and students don't always exactly know what's wanted just from reading the rubric itself. Sometimes it's, it's clearer and sometimes it's not. So he, he talks about things like, um, spe <laughs> like a, a typical rubric for, for performance in a presentation is um, <clears throat> speak clearly and slowly when presenting. And he said, well, it will always depend on the context that you don't always speak slowly. Sometimes you want somebody to sound energetic or passionate about something. Uh, um, <laughs> you, you want people to be engaged. So all of these elements are very dependent on the context of your content. So the, the, the final list that he comes up with is this idea of eye contact and gestures, bizarrely enough. Uh, for presentations, which is more about the face-to-face -face thing really than something online here because you, you don't always get the opportunity for much body movement. But looking at these kind of six areas, life life is about emotion and passion. Poise is, is literally about your, your stance. Um, speed is an appropriate speed. Um, 
voice is is around that speaking clearly he puts out as long as you're understood that that voice should be defined like that um owen do you think there's anything missing from a rubric if you wanted to judge someone's performance here um sense you know that i mean it could be absolute nonsense but they do all their things on that list <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> does it make sense <laughs> is it understandable but i guess this is about that i guess it, he says there's two elements to it so that's probably in the other element rather than the performance. content so yeah if we're only about the performance then that covers most for me yeah i i, I think it is pretty good um the problem is for him i think that is because he divides it into content and to to performance so in his content one he he does talk about content and structure um, and he has about five or six points equally. But then I don't feel that you can really separate the two if you're asking students to watch something. So I think it, it is more sensible to have a mix of, of performance and of content because that's when a student is listening to a fellow student present, you should be gauging both the performance and on what's actually being delivered, the content. So wouldn't be the case though, the, the different exercises might have different focuses. So for example, you might want to actually just have students comfortable with making a short video, in which case it might be about thinking about what's behind you, how close you are and things like that, and forgetting about the content. It can speak about absolutely anything you like. <laughs> and in fact, uh, maybe even not so important about things like speed and tone, but more about just the setup and concentrating on that one thing and so it allows the the I suppose the isolation of different elements of learning at each point well that that's going to I, I totally agree I hadn't thought of that and because especially if we're moving into more distance-based remote yeah. learning then you want students to be comfortable with the medium so just setting up your environment if you're expected to interact with something like Flipgrid um, thinking about these six items and, and additionally you're right thinking about things like your background do, do you have a green sheet like tied to your wall? I mean, you know, are you really that prepared? It took me ages to move this mountain behind me. <laughs> Bulldozers and everything. That, that's the minimum of, of commitment I would expect from you, Jason. That's yeah. <laughs> so putting this all together, Flipgrid, it's, it's a nice, nice, easily available, easy to use platform it's now integrated with that kind of Microsoft ecosystem and works well with other systems like Google. So we, we've reached the end of our 30 minutes and that's the end of our time. And I'll edit out all the bits. So it really is 30 minutes. But I, I would say that if you have the time, it's worth downloading the app, registering for, for Flipgrid uh, online and just playing around with it. And whether you use it with your students or not, it, it's interesting as an icebreaker, especially when we're starting to talk about induction techniques coming in starting a new term and not always potentially meeting our students uh, on campus early on if you have some kind of icebreaker like this routine getting people used to the idea that we're going to do more stuff online and that interacting online should become well it should be more normalized really getting people comfortable with that area so maybe starting out like this is maybe one idea there will be others. And most of all, I'll be looking forward to our next webinar, <laughs> next exciting webinar, which is about how to deliver online. But until then, hopefully you'll all stay safe and I'll see you then. Thank you very much.